All right, let me set the context for the video. This is the official launch of the 100X School Bootcamp 1.0, or if you want to call it Cohort 4, it's pretty much the same thing. It's a six month long uh, live online batch for learning. Four technologies, that's Web Dev plus DevOps as the first technology, AI ML, Web3 and DSA. You can pick and choose which one of these technologies makes sense for you uh, and which ones you would like to learn over the next six months. The learning framework, before we kick things off, 90% of the learning happens in 10% of the topics. And I'm going to go through slightly detailed syllabus, but primarily focus on the 10% of the topics. Um, what would lead to, you know, a more higher paying job or what would, you know, showcase the skills of a senior engineer? Um, what are the difficult bits to focus on that are, you know, hard to learn um, and hard to fake during an interview? There's a more detailed roadmap of this complete syllabus available in a video. You can go to this video. Uh, it'll probably be linked in the description to understand the exact syllabus that's being learned in, you know, these four technologies. Kick things off with web dev, simplest technology out there. I think it's like table stakes to know this right now. Um, there are many stacks you can learn this in. You can learn this using Python and fast API. You can learn this using Rust and Actix web. We'll focus on the MERN stack, which is, you know, MongoDB, Express, React, and Node.js. Um, again, fairly simple stuff. I think a lot of you might already know this. Um, the ones that don't, here is a decentish syllabus. Um, and here are the difficult topics to focus on. I think the things that are going to make you chew a lot of glass is going to be the architecture of JavaScript and understanding what async JavaScript is, what are asynchronous languages slash systems, how are they different from, you know, concurrent languages. Um, some more high level protocols like WebRTC and WebSockets um, and uh, queues and pubs basically advanced backend communication. Um, in terms of the projects, I think if you build a trading app, um, this is one of our benchmark apps at Super30, which is the first app that people built in Super31. People built a Probo, which is sort of close to a trading app in Super32. People built XNES, um, and we'll build some variation of this, um, you know, in this cohort as well. Um, this is a good app to test someone's backend. Um, you either need to be really good at backends or you need to be really good at frontends. Um, there's probably a better path to choose if you're looking for a job compared to you know being decent at both of them. Um, a very good front-end engineer, a very good back-end engineer is probably better than a decent full-stack engineer. So based on that, you know, pick and choose which one of these technologies makes sense for you. High level, this is the syllabus. If you wanted more detailed roadmap, go to this video and you'll, you know, find the web dev syllabus covered in more detail over there. For DevOps, um, DevOps is basically deploying your full-stack applications. Not very difficult today. Again, I think uh, clouds make this very easy to do. Um, so I think the only difficult bit is, you know, just doing this once. And once you do it once, uh, from there, it's very easy to deploy applications. Depending on the scale, you might have to learn more and more things um, as you scale up. Um, you might have to understand how you scale up backends, how do you add observability, monitoring to your uh, backends, if it makes sense for you to use container runtimes, um, should you deploy on a, on a Kubernetes cluster or not. Um, that's step two. Step one is you know understanding how you deploy applications in a fairly basic fashion, um, which is not too difficult to do. Um, the difficult bit here, the you know ten percent that's really hard, are probably going to be understanding you know what are containers, what are container runtimes, what are the various container runtimes that exist. Um, understanding Kubernetes, uh, probably the architecture of Kubernetes, and how can you deploy uh, you know uh, your apps on a Kubernetes cluster. Monitoring and observability, a slightly more underrated thing uh, that people tend to skip, but you know, can be asked during an interview and also is a good thing for people to focus on. Probably writing tests should also be you know, covered in this section. How do you write tests? How do you build your applications? Um, how do you make sure there's more coverage in your applications, so on and so forth. Um, and lastly, um, sandboxing and firecracker is a new technology that I've added. Um, firecracker is fairly old, but sandboxing as a construct is something, you know, probably six months young, like fairly young right now, um, but it's being used very heavily. So what is this and how is it, you know, different from how sandboxing was done back in the day. Um, all three of these projects are very related to each other and require, you know, a decent bunch of DevOps. Uh, you can decide the depth of DevOps you want to go in here. Um, you can actually go, you know, fairly deep in trying to build these systems from scratch. Um, so that's what we'll do. And that's, I think, the 10% the of the DevOps syllabus. Web3. Um, we're primarily going to focus on Solana. We might touch a bunch of other um, blockchains like Hyperliquid, basically a bunch of DeFi uh, or Perps blockchains that are coming out right now. Uh, when we reach the Perps sections, but before that, we'll focus on Solana as an L1, um, the Solana runtime, a bunch of cryptography constructs. You can actually go very deep over here. We'll see how deep we go. The top 10% would probably be understanding the data model of Solana. Uh, that's like really tough and you know, the very first hurdle that you'll see over here, once you do, uh, then building a bunch of, you know, contracts, programs on top of it. Um, the popular ones are going to be these, or the difficult ones are going to be a DLMM, a CLMM, a PUPS um, exchange. Um, Rust advances again an interesting sort of a thing. We'll see how deep we go over here. Uh, there's some Rust you need for Solana, there's more Rust that you need for general Web2 systems. Um, We'll see how deep you want to go. Um, but again, this is where you'll have to choose some glass. Um, lastly, 
a bunch of things that you're not generally expected to do as an engineer unless you're working you know um, in a specific company that does this for example not a lot of companies do indexing in house but if you do in a work in a company that does do it um, they need to know this similarly uh, not a lot of companies do private key management uh, most of them depend on something like privy but if you are a company like privy um, then how do you you know do private key management using mpcs and shamirs uh, and a bunch of you know ad hoc web 2 web 3 systems which is uh, which is primarily what most companies are doing they're partially web 3 partially web 2 um, and you know how do you build like a partially con- uh, centralized contract uh, and how it you know just works today Amongst the projects, probably Dex is going to be the most difficult one. We, we'll see which of these protocols we end up using for it. Um, and prediction market is going to be a new one. Um, we'll see if we do this on-chain or off-chain. But this is something new, exciting, and you know that uh, has a lot of steam right now. Uh, building an on-chain prediction marketplace. Um, it's very close to what we'll do in the Web2 systems as well, uh, which is uh, the Probo or the trading application. But how do you do it on-chain? That's the high level of Solana slash Web3. And lastly, uh, AI and ML, which is something, you know, I'm assuming a lot of you are excited about. Uh, this will be led by me and Rishabh both, so two people. Uh, the 10%, I mean, there's like a lot to do over here, depending on if you want to do classical ML or not. Uh, we'll probably not focus too much on it, but the initial one month for both, I think, Web3 as well as uh, AI ML is going to be focused, you know, a little more foundational, uh, a little more history about it. Uh, so that while people are catching up in web dev, they don't feel overwhelmed, you know, actually building systems in machine learning and Web3. Um, so the first few, you know, probably the first few weeks or the first month is going to be the history, classical ML, how ML used to be done before. Uh, and then we'll focus on a little more research heavy topics that includes um, attention, coding simple attention, which is slightly easier. Uh, and then various variations, optimizations of attention that I use today uh, for sometimes translation tasks, sometimes image tasks, sometimes, you know, um, language next predictor tasks. Um, and how are, you know, they different for every model that you see right now. For example, how is the attention implementation of, you know, uh, let's say something like Llama, different from something like uh, DeepSeek. Fine-tuning, building your own model, fine-tuning your model for a specific use case, reinforcement learning, um, RLHF, uh, or fine-tuning using re- reinforcement learning, um, writing your own evals and a bunch of advanced topics. Basically, the 10% over here is probably a bloated 50%, um, depending on if you want to go to the research side. That means if you want to be, you know, a research engineer, which is really hard to do as a young engineer, even Rishabh, who will be instructing this, uh, is sort of struggling with this, you know, even though he's really good at research, because you are young and you don't have a PhD, uh, gets slightly harder, you know, you probably get rejected up front from, you know, 50, 60, 70% of the companies if you're not in the US or if you're not in research, um, which is where the other side comes in, which is uh, applied AI. This assumes you don't need to, you can use attention as a black box or LLMs as a black box. And how can you build on top of it, including things like, you know, agents, uh, vector DBs, RAG, memory, um, MCPs, which is maybe let's skip, not as important, but uh, basically trying to build agents from first principles, the various category of agents that you can build. How do you do context engineering so that you can provide the best context with limited tokens to the LLM and you know extract the best output from it? You'll also understand how can you build systems on top of these agents. Uh, so that's a two important projects over here. RL file tuning plus writing evals is probably a more research specific uh, project. How can you build, let's say, a Rust specific model that's really good? And how can you show it's better than, you know, a specific version of Llama, DeepSeek, uh, ChatGPT? Devon, which is more of an infrastructure project, uh, but also involves, you know, basically involves a bunch of agents, slightly more applied AI, slightly less of research. Here are two videos on the channel where Rishabh has taught attention and how uh, models understand images. You can go through them to understand his teaching patterns. Um, I would say it would be generally harder for people to digest the research part. You can skip through this and take this as a black box. That probably makes sense for at least 70-80% of the people. Um, and just focus on applied AI. Um, if you do want to, you know, spend some time, chew some glass, it makes a lot of sense to learn this. But you'll probably have to spend all of your time learning this and not focus on anything else um, if you don't want to learn research well. With that, we'll move on uh, to DSA. Uh, I mean, it's like fairly standard savers here, so I'll not spend a lot of time here. Um, Dhrusa has been kind enough to, you know, uh, lead this every Thursday. So if you feel like you need interview prep or, you know, live classes, uh, this might make sense for you. This is free anyways if you buy any of the courses. Um, DSA, you know, a Thursday class of DSA just comes attached with it where you learn all these technologies. But again, this is not, not too difficult to learn yourself. Uh, so feel free to, you know, pick and choose if it makes sense for you. The schedule is going to look like this. Um, Thursday, we'll have, so basically have four live classes every week. Thursday, the DSA class lev- led by Dhrusa. Um, Friday, I'll take Web Dev DevOps, the simpler bits. Uh, Saturday, I'll take Web 3. We'll go slow initially. Um, and then, you know, by the time Web Dev has reached a decentish pace, so like a month, um, is when we'll start to actually write code here. Initially, it'll be a bunch of, you know, history of the runtime, Solana, L1, L2s, Bitcoin, things like these. Um, 
and sunday ai ml again the first month fairly uh, hopefully simpler warming up classical ml the history of ai and then eventually uh, after a month actually diving deeper into attention and then uh, applied ml the timings are going to be 8 to 10 and lastly recordings are available after the class so if you do miss a class or if you want to do it you know at your own pace you can all right uh, this time we have 50000 dollars of direct bounties from super team earn this is not new uh, cohort 3 had i think 25000 dollars worth of bounties um, this is more a little more formalized this time um, every month at the end of the month we'll do a contest um, and the top 100 people in these contests will all get 100 dollars worth of you know usdc that you can offer amp to inr if you want um, and it will be max 3 wins per students it will be an extremely hard contest was it's really hard to filter out the top 100 people um, and it will be an open book contest also anyone can use ai and hence you know you have to make it a little harder uh, but if you you know use your brain correctly if you've gone through the classes um, i don't think it should be too difficult to get in the in the top 100 at least you know once in a span of 5 months um, and the whole purpose of this is you know for a super team or solana to understand and get the best talent and for us is to you know if if you feel like you can't afford it right now hopefully you'll just make your money back um, if you're being accountable it's really hard to be in the top 10 uh, but being in the top 100 is you know mostly about being accountable uh, and less about being you know um, really good with the csiq there's also a direct entry uh, and 50% scholarship if you do want to join the next super 30 uh, gsoc if you've done gsoc then also this criteria pretty much applies um, or if you do really well in the cohort um, then this is the only other funnel that we used to get um, people for the next super 30 um, the price of the cohort if you just want to get web dev devops it's 4000 rupees just web 3 4000 just ai 4000 um, if you want to get all three of these uh, then it's 6000 rupees and If you use the coupon code early bird right now, you'll get another ten percent off for the next two days. If you are an old student of ours, that means if you've joined cohort two or cohort three in the past, um, for the next two days you can use this coupon code and get a twenty percent off. The DSA classes are included in everything. Um, so if you buy just this, just this, just this, or the combined bootcamp, you'll have access to the DSA classes irrespective. And again, this will be the schedule. FAQs. Um, feel free to go through them. It's nothing crazy here. Three hour validity. If you have any reason to get a refund, just email to hundred xjobs at gmail dot com. The first seven days, and you know you're good to go. Um, there's no placement guarantee, referral guarantee, anything like that. It never happens in an online cohort. It never happens in an offline cohort either. Uh, but just make sure you have your accountability on yourself. The best people sometimes get placed through us, but the probability is really low for you to optimize for that. Um, max two sessions per account that's one on her career classes dot dot in and then we have another cms where you can log in as a different user um dsa course is free if you buy any of the courses duration is we're aiming for five to six months we see how much it might get extended um but the aim is to finish it off in six months um recordings are available after the classes and we'll start the course mid of jan uh, but we'll start warming up from fourth of jan for complete beginners by warming up i basically means we'll throw a bunch of resources at you um that you should go through uh, we'll also be giving a lot of recordings before the week starts so that you can warm up we have a bunch of resources now a bunch of old videos um, that we'll share before the actual live class comes disclaimer number 1 you cannot do everything um so don't optimize for doing four things together uh, probably pick one niche amongst ai and web3 uh, and if you have never done programming before then do web dev uh, or just do web dev ds if you want a standard job pick and choose uh, but no one can do i think all four things together um, and if you're specifically picking deeper things or difficult things like ai and web3 uh, it just makes sense to you know stick to one for now um, and not get you know average at both of them try to get slightly better at one you don't need a course is the disclaimer number 2 you can always run these things yourself uh, the resources the syllabus is all out there uh, i've shared it in more detail uh, in another video so feel free to go through it and you know learn all of these things yourself uh, do not spend money that you can't you know uh, you don't have or you know don't take a loan or anything like that just if you can buy it buy it if not that's fine um, and you know you can always learn these things from various resources yourself uh, that's all i had for this video hopefully the price isn't too much uh, for a 6 month course and you know depending on what phase of life you're in um, pick and choose if you want to buy um, and you know aim for getting the super team grant in case you do buy and you can't afford it right now just try to be as accountable as possible perform well and you know you'll probably make your money back uh, either through the grant or hopefully uh, through an actual entry level or a more senior level job with that let's call it uh, i'll see a few of you in the cohort and rest on youtube bye bye